Are you guys ready to talk about the Threadripper Pro? We now have a chipset, and I want to talk about that. I don't think it's premature, but I think right now is a good time. Since we have the WRX80, we've got three motherboards that have been announced. Hello, everybody. Welcome to BuilderBot. I'm your host, Gil Boyd. Thanks for joining us. I want to put up some information from an article that I've come across from WCCF Tech. And WCCF Tech, that's the acronym for Where Consumers Come First for Technology. It's a really good article, and I want to use this as a lead-in. This was done probably about a week ago, but since we have three motherboards now we can talk about on the Threadripper Pro, since about three months ago when the first Threadripper Pro was announced with the Lenovo, we have some idea one of the price, but we needed to know the chipset. Well, now we know the chipset and we have three motherboards. We can look at those three motherboards, even though we don't have all the specs, but we can get some ideas of what we're going to be able to do and what's going to be allocated. So let's take a look. Now, what I like about this chart on WCCF Tech, we've got four processors. Because if you'll remember, what's significant about this is because of what we've been doing and what we've learned from the X299, X399 that we've built and the TRX40 that we've built. When we start building on the WRX80, since we have three motherboards, some of this issue with slot assignments and lane allocations is going to become a more apparent. I believe Lee was the one that pointed out, said, uh, is that a design flaw? because the way the TRX-40 is designed. No, it was a design that took into account what's getting ready to happen with the WRX-80. So with those three motherboards, let's take a look at the first one, which is Supermicro, Gigabyte, and ASUS. And I can make a case for all three. Okay, first of all, 64 cores, 128 PCI lanes, 8-channel memory. And that's not just regular 8-channel desktop memory. We're talking about ECC memory. Remember, we're looking at a workstation. This is not just a regular desktop, but this is a workstation class motherboard. Supermicro servers, they used to make desktops. Asus, desktops, workstations, and that's been one of our complaints. And now Gigabyte's coming out with a workstation class motherboard. With the Threadripper 3 on the TRX40, we didn't have a workstation class motherboard, all this game stuff. Uh, and we've done some amazing things with resource allocation, but being able to have 128 PCI lanes, that's phenomenal seven slots. Now, what's interesting with those seven slots, and we're going to take a look at this motherboard and check that out. What was significant was when WCCF Tech pointed out that you could put in two three-slot RTX 90s. That is significant. On the TRX 40, if we put in two RTX 90s, they have to be two-slot video cards. We cannot put in two three-slot video cards. It's just the design won't allow it. But when we go to this format, if we're looking at, uh, and it's, that's the big thing I want to start with is the format. If we start with a Supermicro board, we're looking at a Supermicro case. Whereas if we look at the ASUS or we look at the Gigabyte, that format will allow for us to get a regular desktop case. It's not going to be the uh, XLATX. It's going to be a little bit bigger. But, hey, change one thing changes everything. The fact that you can use two video cards. Now, with those seven slots... Uh, let's take a look at the processors because on the TRX40 we had three processors to choose from. Because on the WRX80 we have four processors to choose from. That's a big deal. And even though we don't know the price, I like this chart the way it's arranged because we've got a 12, 16, 32, and 64 core processor. Now cutting to the chase, my preference is probably going to be this 32 core processor. But we won't know until they come out because it's always bang for the buck which one's going to be the best value for the money. And even though I have a uh, perception on what I think may be the best, until we see some numbers, I don't know. We do know what a total system costs based on what Lenovo did with that system, which is a neutered system. But I'm doing this now, <clears throat> even though it's a bit premature and maybe a little bit late, I had an email uh, from a person who went ahead because she said she couldn't wait her system was 10 years old, she needed a new computer, and instead of waiting to build the computer that she wanted to build, she decided to buy one of these. So the question of build or buy, if you want to buy one, that's your only choice is the Lenovo. But if you want to build one, if you can wait about another three or four months, that number three and four keeps coming up. But if you can wait about another three or four months, then we should have access to that. Now, based on this article, they say we're going to see these in March. This is toward the end of January. So four processors coming out. we got three motherboards. I expect we're going to see some more motherboards. But based on what we've got, let's go through those. First, we can see, as, as I said, the processors. But as we scroll on down and take a look at the motherboards, from Supermicro, Asus, and Gigabyte. Now, they've got the Asus listed first. But what I want to do is I want to take you to the Supermicro board. 
and we'll start from there since that was the first board released. Now there's a good picture. Look at there. And if we and if we read the text on this, it'll talk about one, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of those slots is a 16 lane slot. That's a lot of stuff. Now because of the arrangement, and I didn't get it till I looked at the picture, since there's one area here that has nothing. That's three slots. That means you can put a three slot card here and a three slot card here, which means that's it. But that's where it would work because the RTX 3090 is the only card now that has the, uh, the bridge on it. So if you want two RTX 3090s, this is what you're going to be building, either one of these three motherboards. And I want to make a case with this board to show you because I can make a case for each one of these systems. When someone says, OK, which motherboard should I get? Well, I can tell you my preference, and I can tell you how it's always been. If you're going to build a server, Super Micro. If you're going to build a workstation, Asus. Now, the next question is, OK, if I'm going to build a desktop, this is a desktop workstation computer. Typically, historically, it's always been if you're building Intel, it's Asus. If you're going to build AMD, it's Gigabyte. But this is going to be a game changer, and the question is going to be, who's going to give us the best value? Now, when I first read about the Asus motherboard, let's take a look at that. I got real excited on this ASUS board because of the resources. And if you'll notice, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, six of those, or possibly seven, I'll have to check the specs again. The ASUS has made use of larger aluminum heat sinks. So there's three 8 pin power taps. There's number one, there's number two, and there's number three. And here's your 24 pin power tap. And of course, there's the USB C for the front panel. That looks like a USB 3.1, two U2 ports, and one, two, three, four. That looks like eight SATA ports. Now here it is spelled out. Seven PCI Express 4.0 slots, all full length, all complemented by metal shielding. Eight SATA ports, two U2 ports, dual M.2 slots. Pretty good. So USB-C and USB 3 headers, a power on-off reset, and a high-end audio system isolated on the PCB. Let's hope so. And that's on the ASUS. So that, too, can accomplish two video cards, RTX 3090s. Now, here's what's exciting. We've kind of gotten used to these bundles. So one, we got Supermicro, we get a motherboard. And building with Supermicro, we're going to be putting probably in a Supermicro case. It's just kind of the way it goes. But we have options when we go to the ASUS, typically they're the workstation boards. We were going to be looking at an X299, but based on where we're coming in with this, and since the technology is going to come in right about in the right time in about four months, this is where we need to be looking. So as the technology progresses, the ability to have that many lanes with that many slots, that's just phenomenal. They're going to include in that bundle, as I read the press release, one of the M.2 cards, the ASUS HyperCard, PCI Express version 4.0. Everything's moving that direction. That's pretty cool. That tips the iceberg. So which motherboard would I get based on those two requirements? Or based on those two motherboards, that's the motherboard I'd get. However, let's take a look at Gigabyte and see what they've got. Now, as we follow on through with this article, and I'm not sure if it's mentioned here or if it's in another article that I saw, but we have dual 8-pin power connectors and the 24-pin power connector. So I'm kind of surprised there's no mention of a peg. You know, the peg connector, like on the motherboards, which is another power tap that's kind of on the edge on the side, which is supposed to be for the PCI Express graphics connector. Anything, if you load up all those cards, you need to put that other connector on. So I don't know if that's part of the specs, and I haven't seen it according to the picture. What is curious on this particular motherboard, it's got video on board. So my concern and my curiosity and my question is, how are they doing that? And it's almost as if it's set up to be like one of the old style uh, server boards where you had some low end video just so you could see what you're doing. Well, this is not a low end board. This is a workstation board. It's not like a server board. Again, it's like a workstation board, especially if you're going to put a couple of RTX 3090s on here. So I don't, I don't know how they're doing the video on this. I don't, I don't know where that's coming from, which kind of has me... Uh, curious. But as far as resources go, let's take a look again. We put in 256 gigs of RAM on the TRX 40. On this platform, the WRX 80, we can go up to one terabyte and it takes RDIMMs and LDIMMs. So this is not your average everyday RAM. This is going to be some high end RAM because we have to remember a computer makes up three things, RAM, motherboard and processor. That's that's your main items. But what what influences things now is based on the video card we're going to get, even though they're scarce as hen's teeth. There's only one RTX 3090 that I'm aware of that's only two slots wide, and that's one by Gigabyte. Uh, we'll get a link up to that in this article. We've talked about it before, if you can find one. And again, the NVIDIA card that we've used for this presentation is the one that we were able to get our hands on. Of the three that we asked about to be registered for, we only heard about one, and we've only heard about that one, period. 
even the, uh, the, uh, even the Asus that we registered for, we've never heard anything about that card. So, you know, it is what it is. But if you're building for the future and you're building for a kind of machine that's going to handle two RTX 3090s, and those are the three-slot variety, these are the kind of boards you're going to go on. The question then becomes, again, who's got the best value? Okay, Supermicro is a motherboard. Asus is a motherboard with an Asus HyperQuad M.2 card. Pretty cool. Well, Gigabyte's going to up the ante, and they're going to include their M.2 quad card, but they're also going to include the same thing we got with the Gigabyte Designare TRX40. On the Gigabyte WRX80 SU8 motherboard, they're going to include a Thunderbolt 3 card, which means there'll be BIOS support for it. So if you want all the bells and whistles, including the kitchen sink, that's probably going to be the board to go for. So based on what we currently know of those three boards, that's going to be our choice. How that's going to play out, we'll have to see. Uh, in time, when we're able to put together a list complete with components, as we move forward, we'll start doing that. Now, we don't want to be the first ones to build one of these machines. We want to wait and get a couple of BIOS updates out there. Why do I say that? Well, y'all remember the problem we had with the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, and we couldn't understand why we couldn't use slot number four for the Thunderbolt card? Wizard on the Gigabyte forums has now done it and outlined what needs to be done, and we're going to show that in another video, and all the credit goes to him. So... We're going to show how that works. In a nutshell, it wasn't a BIOS update that made that work. It was a firmware update for the Thunderbolt 3 card. Who'd have thought? As long as we've been building computers, I've never seen a card keep a system from booting. And when you think about all the SCSI cards we used to use and all the things you had to do to configure those, a firmware update. Wow. So anyway, this board has probably the best value based on those two items. Now, another issue would be 10 gigabit Ethernet. Do you want single 10 gigabit Ethernet, which kind of blows your mind for those who are just now doing gigabit, or do you want dual gigabit Ethernet? One board has one board has dual, one board has single. But you have to remember resource allocation, even with 128 PCI Express lanes, all version 4.0. You know, things have to be allocated, but there will be nothing shared. The question is how that's allocated. Because if you take one thing away to get something else, you know, you got to give something up. For example, if we have uh, two NVMe cards that we can put on the uh, motherboard, that means that's uh, four lanes per NVMe card, per NVMe drive. So it depends on how they allocate it. So as we get more information, I'm going to share more with you guys. But it was really important right now and essential since yesterday we got that email uh, for one of our viewers, and I want to thank you for sharing that, who was asking about how they should handle their storage management. So I proceeded to talk to him about the boot drive, the uh, secondary drive, the tertiary, and, and the fourth drive that would go in that machine so that they can uh, manage their data. They're going to be doing GIS and some uh, analytical stuff that I think is going to be phenomenal. So as we go forward building a machine, we've got three motherboards. We're going to wait, see what's going to happen with the next batch. I want to see some BIOS updates. Uh, right now we have press releases. The only link I have to a specific motherboard is the one by Gigabyte that I will put up. And as that other information becomes available, we'll put that up and share it with you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a hard time containing myself. I mentioned some of this in the last video, and I wasn't going to do this. But when I got that email last night, I had to do this. So thanks for watching. My name is Gil Boyd. We look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. We're out.